Hello and welcome to the sixth week of the Operations Research 2 course. In the first five weeks, we have talked about dynamic programming, and this week we are going to move on to a brand new topic that is called the transportation problem. Let's start by talking about why we need to learn about this kind of problem. So the transportation problem is actually um, one of the subtopics that we are going to talk about in these two weeks that consists of transportation, assignment, and transshipment problems. These problems actually may be modeled by linear programming and may be solved by simplex algorithm that you have learned in the Operations Research 1 course. However, they have their own special characteristics such that there are specialized algorithms for each of these problems they may solve these problems more efficiently. For example, for transportation problem, we are going to learn transportation simplex that may be used to solve transportation problem more efficiently. So let's start by looking at a transportation problem and try to form, formulate a linear programming model for this problem. So if you read the problem, you see that um, it says that the electric power plant can supply the following numbers. And remember, whenever you see something like this, can supply something at most, it means this is the constraint. And then the demand of the peak power for each cities that um, must be um, satisfied, this is also a constraint because you need to satisfy the demand. And then, um, so you have power plants to supply the electricity. You have the cities that has the demand of the electricity. And there is the cost from sending 1 million kilowatt hours of electricity from one plant to one city. And that cost is shown in this table. Okay. So you have the plants that generate the electricity, you have the cities that need the electricity, and there is a cost from sending one kilowatt hour of electricity from one particular plant to one particular city. And the cost is different according to this table. Okay, And the objective of this problem is to minimize the total cost of meeting each city's peak power demand. Um, by sending the electricity from the three power plants that you have. There will be a pause on the video to give you the time to read this problem carefully, and then I will return the discussion of this problem after the pause. As usual, when we formulate a linear programming model, we need to think about the decision variable. In this case, it is quite clear that we have three power plants and then we have four cities that need the electricity. So our decision is um, how many kilowatt hours that we produce at plant I and then we send to city J. And then we may um, denote that decision as XIJ which uh, means the number of kilowatt hours that is produced at plant I and sent to city J. So the unit for XIJ is kilowatt hours. The objective function is that uh, we would like to minimize the total cost of shipping the electricity from all plants to all cities. Okay, so you may just look at the cost and then this is $8 sending from plant one to city one. So $8 times how many kilowatt hours you sent. Because uh, this $8 means that $8 per kilowatt hour that you sent. Okay, so um, another example, let's say $7 for sending the electricity from plant two to city four so seven times x to four seven dollars per kilowatt hours that we sent times x to four is the number of kilowatt hours that we sent from plant two to city four okay so we take the sum for all um, possibilities 
uh, starting from x11 up to x34. So I think this objective function is quite straightforward. From the problem, we see that we have the supply constraint because each plant can only produce as many as, for example, plant 1, 35 million kilowatt hours, plant 2, 50, and plant 3, 40. So there is a limitation uh, for each plant uh, on how much they can produce the electricity, and that is a constraint. So um, whatever you send out from plant 1, so x1, 1, x1, 2, x1, 3, and x1, 4, it means everything that you send out from plant 1 must be less than or equal to its capacity. It makes sense, right? Whatever you want to send from one plant must be less than or equal to the capacity of the plant. And do the same thing for plant 2 and plant 3. There is also the demand constraint, which means that the demand for each city must be satisfied. So let's see for city 1, uh, the total electricity that you send to city 1, so x1, 1, x2, 1, x3, 1. So this is the electricity that um, city 1 gets from all the plants that we have must be greater than or at least equal to the demand 45. Okay, so see that the sign here is greater than or equal to because at least we need to satisfy the demand. If it is more than the demand, it's okay in this case. Um, another example, let's say CD4. Whatever you send to CD4, so X14, X24, X34, this means that um, the electricity that you send from all the plants to city 4 must be greater than or equal to the demand, which is 30. Okay, so we have um, seven constraints, three constraints from the supply side, and four constraints from the demand side. So here's the complete formulation, and as usual, do not forget to state the sign restrictions, saying that all variables must be greater than or equal to zero. In the previous slide, we have seen that we may formulate the problem into a linear programming model. Another representation that we may use is that uh, this kind of graph representation, where each node on the left are the supply points, and then the nodes on the right are the demand points. So we have four cities for the demand points. And then the edges here shows that how much we sent from one plant to one city. So for example, here it shows in the optimal solution, we send um, zero kilowatt hours from plant one to city one, 10 kilowatt hours from plant one to city two, 25 kilowatt hours from plant one to city three, and um, finally from plant one to city four is zero kilowatt hours. So we have not talked about how we can get this optimal solution. I'm just showing you this kind of representation. Okay, let me repeat. We have not talked about how we can obtain this optimal solution. This um, graph only shows for example, if we already have an optimal solution, then we can represent the solution like this. So um, in the transportation problem in general, we have the supply points, we have the demand points, and then we also have the cost from sending the um, items from the supply points to the demand points. Usually we may also um, represent the transportation problem in terms of a transportation table. So you see that the rows are the supply points. So the supply points, and then you write down how much each supply points can um, produce um, something. So these are the capacity. Uh, you may think of the production capacity of each supply point. And then the columns are the demand points. 
and then here you write down the demand for each demand point and then the third thing is that you see there are small um, squares here and inside of the squares you write down the cost um, to send the items from one supply point to a particular demand point so c11 here is um, the cost from sending uh, the items from supply one to demand one and then um, so we have cmn because we have m suppliers and then n demand points and cmn is the cost from sending the items um, the cost of sending one item from supply point m to demand point n so here's the table for the example that we've seen before we have three supply points and each of them has the capacity to uh, produce or supply items we have also four columns which um, represent four demand points and each demand point has their own demand and then inside the small square uh, in each cell here shows the cost from of transporting one item from plant one to city one for example so eight dollars transporting one kilowatt hour from plant one to city one and here seven dollars means the cost of transporting one kilowatt hour from plant two to city four and then inside the cell itself is the value um, that shows um, the amount of the items that we sent from one plant to one city so for example in this solution we sent uh, 25 kilowatt hours from plant one to city three again we have not talked about how we may get a solution or an optimal solution this is just an example um, assuming that we have got a solution Okay, so that's the end of this video. We have seen that we may um, represent the transportation problem as a linear programming model, as a graph representation, or in a table representation. In the next video, we're going to talk about a balance and non-balanced transportation problem. So see you on the next one. Thank you.